Hello everyone and welcome to Abundantly Minimal. My name is Sarah and today is day 27 of Minimal May. Now today I do have somewhat of a confession to make. I in general live a pretty minimalist lifestyle but there is one area for sure where I cannot be considered a minimalist at all. I guess a maximalist is, would be what I am in that category and it's gotten to somewhat of a breaking point. This has to do with digital clutter and right now my computer is pretty much completely packed full with files and most of these files I probably don't need just because when you hear how many there are it's a little a little overwhelming and something needs to happen so today the plan is I'm going to during the day delete and get rid of any unnecessary files greatly reduce what I have on my computer, organize things. I do have an external hard drive, which is already carrying a lot of stuff, but really organizing that and getting some control over this digital clutter because it's been very stressful recently. Um, currently, I've just got some things written down on a notepad so I don't forget the numbers. Currently, my computer holds 750 gigs of data, gigabytes, so that is on the larger side. At this point, I just have 835 megabytes left. So not even one gigabyte left. And that is kind of a problem. As far as the numbers, so uh, photos and videos that are in like my iPhoto, 24,177. I've had this computer for four years, so this is accumulated in four years, but I have already taken some stuff off and lit some stuff, so this is even as bad as it was, but I just have like no space left on my computer. Um, downloads folder has 3,739, not organized at all. Documents, 2,029 documents. Movies, these are just separate movie files, 1,220. Songs, 3,583 and there's some other files too that aren't as like large numbers but whew, it adds up and especially the photos and videos these are some of the items that have larger file size so that is definitely one of the roots of our problem so I'm going to be going to clean this out and I will get back to you a little bit later with the results what I ended up doing and give you my best tricks since I'm going through this transformation today too so enough is enough let's get into it Hello you guys, so I am back. I have done my digital decluttering. Turns out it was a little bit more of a lofty project than I had planned, but I did really help improve a lot of elements of my digital space and definitely made some great strides in terms of decluttering my computer. Now let's talk about what my tips are after going through this process today. First of all, I would say start with your desktop. I have dramatically cleaned mine up. I also changed my screen saver, but basically I don't know if you can tell, but this is where all the icons are. I used to have so much on the screen and it was a chaotic mess, but I organized things. I put some in folders, any files I didn't need, I deleted them. And I think that it's a much more organized space and the screen saver I chose as well is much more calming. So I feel like overall, just when I open my computer up for the first time, I'm already more calm because of this minimalist desktop. My second place where I did some decluttering was my email inbox. Now I know everyone has a different way that they take care of email. As a whole, sometimes I do let things build up a bit. What I would recommend, go through any subscriptions that you have and if there's any like companies that you're on a newsletter for or any sort of things that you're not really opening and reading, I would encourage you to unsubscribe from those. That can help you to remove some of that clutter from coming into your inbox in the first place. If you're using a lot of different email addresses, consider if you can consolidate into just one or two if that can be realistic. Decide if you need to move certain things into folders, if you can archive messages, delete certain messages. Trying to keep the inbox space as calm as possible. That can help you from feeling overwhelmed, it can help you help prevent you from having more than you can handle and you misplace something or don't catch some important details. So I think that can be a really great way to keep things organized. When you get an email, certain tasks are just really quick, short tasks. If it's something that's going to take you less than two minutes, at least for me, what I found is trying to take care of that immediately rather than just pushing it off because then eventually they start to build up. Now an alternative email approach has to do with dealing with emails all in a bunch at a certain time of day or a certain 
part of your routine that makes the most sense. I feel like email is interesting because it can extend our work days quite a bit if we're continuously checking email for a work perspective. And eventually that can just kind of be overwhelming, like you're never actually not working because if you're checking your email on your time off or if you've got alerts on your phone that tell you whenever a new email comes in, those can all be frustrations and can make it really tough to actually de-stress and unwind after work. So decide what works for you. If you're someone who would be better off to check your email in very specific times a day and prevent that from interfering with your personal life, that might be something to consider. For me, I do check my email more than I should. So I do think checking email periodically can be a good thing. But if there are small tasks that come up, like while you're at work, for instance, and it seems most beneficial to just take care of it and be done with it, get the email out of there, not have to think about it in the future, I think that can ultimately save a lot of time. My next tip for digital decluttering has to do with photos and videos. Now, this for me was the worst area. When I started, I had 24,177 photos and videos which is a little bit insane. And that was just in like iPhoto for me. And then for the movies, the movie files that I had, I had 1,220. So with these, I went through and saw that a lot of these clips were just kind of weird files that I didn't really need. And so I was able to delete a lot of those. I deleted about 4,000 photos and about 1,000 of the movie files. So that was a great progress. I just kind of looked through and realized that a lot of it had served me in the past, but wasn't really giving me any value now, and I hadn't clicked on these files in years. I still have a lot more to do with these, but I think that this is an area where it can be really helpful for us to think from a minimalist perspective when we're taking these photos and going through our photos in that present moment. I think these photos can accumulate over time for me, especially from travel. So when I first started traveling internationally, this was a different computer, but I would take hundreds and hundreds of photos every day. I think my record was like taking, I don't know, like 650 photos in one day. That's a problem. <laughs> but basically I think that if we, while those photos are fresh in our minds and go through them and delete the ones we don't want then, it makes it easier for us in the future because let's say I want to post a picture from a previous trip on Instagram or wherever, then I don't have as many photos and bad photos to sift through. We all probably know that sometimes you have to take multiple pictures of the same thing to get one that turns out the best or your favorite, or maybe you have tried taking you know, a lot of selfies and only one of them turns out. Whatever it is, we might take a lot, but while we're in that moment or shortly after, while it's still relatively fresh, going through and deleting the ones that you don't want right away can just save a lot of space and prevent this buildup of a lot of photos, especially whether it's your phone, computer. If your device is running out of space, this is really great to do in that moment rather than, you know, I'm looking at photos that are two years old at this point. Next up with music, I do have a lot of songs on iTunes, but depending on whatever music platform you are interested in. If you're looking to reduce your music clutter, there are a lot of music streaming services where rather than owning the music, you're sharing it or listening to it. A lot of music is on YouTube, Spotify, Pandora. Some of these sites could be alternatives if you're someone who doesn't need to have a specific owned copy. I know for me, some of the things that I was deleting, I did have some duplicate tracks from when I was copying songs from the iTunes on my old computer when it was dying and then transferred it to this new computer. So I went through and deleted a lot of those duplicates, but also looking through and seeing if there were certain songs, like let's say I had imported a CD. I went through a phase for a while uh, in college where they had tons of CDs in the libraries there and I would just check out CDs and import the whole CD on there. And actually not even, in some cases, not even have time to listen to the full CD. Or I'd listen to just one, a couple songs on repeat and forget about the rest. So going through and deciding if you actually like certain songs and if it's worth for you owning them or having them. And I found, to be honest, that a lot of the songs I didn't really care about. And finally, social media accounts. If you feel like you are following any accounts that are bringing you down, maybe promoting negativity, making you feel worse about yourself, making you feel stressed out, if there's any other people who you are following who that maybe they have a negative effect on your life, those might be things that you consider removing yourself from. So whether that is unsubscribing, unfriending, unfollowing, whatever it is, it's kind of a tricky thing. I think it's important to spend your time in areas where the content does add value. I'm somewhat of a YouTube junkie myself, and 
found it very easy to subscribe to many, many channels and then over kind of almost get like overwhelmed by the amount of content there and spend too much time watching YouTube. What's been funny this past month when I've been putting out videos every single day, I've actually found myself watching the least amount of YouTube just because I'm focusing a lot of my time on being creative and getting this content out there for you guys and having a great time doing it. But you know, I think that's important. That was an important shift that had to happen, um, that I had to reduce some of my own consumption of this media, and then it has made me be more productive and um, given me a lot of inspiration to keep creating my own content. So I think that's an interesting balance too. I know that it's fun to scroll through Instagram or check these other social media networks, and it's enjoyable, but it can add up and it can take a lot of time out of our day. And if that time isn't serving us for what is most important, that could be something to consider. Now, I've got immense value from much of the social media, YouTube channels, etc., that I follow. And so I don't think that it's inherently bad. I think that you just want to reflect for yourself what role, how much you're consuming it, and what role does that play. If it's more of a negative role, then those could be some of the sources and people, etc., to unfollow. So those were a couple of things that I did to declutter my computer and do some digital decluttering. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was and you want to do more decluttering, I do have a free declutter challenge guide. I'll put the link to that below in the description field if you want to check that out. That will take you through decluttering different rooms and areas of your house or apartment and can ask the really tough questions because sometimes you just need something else to give you some support when it's just you trying to figure out what you should keep or what you should get rid of. So anyway, that's today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I'll see you tomorrow for our next day of Minimal May. Bye!